Hello everybody. Um, hello also people, people online. Um, I've been doing this event, I've been keynoting, as some of you already might know, as I've been keynoting for the last years. And as a consultant house, we work with closer to 2,000 companies. We always, we get to see many organizations, but we share their stories. And today, I'm, I'm so happy both to be here to a live audience and also online. And not to share a story, but inside kids that listen to one. So, you. Emma, welcome. Um, let's start with just a short introduction into who is Emma, what's TV2, and... and My role in the company, yep. I guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, hi everyone. I'm Emma, and I'm the product manager of a level <coughs> tooling and a observability team here at TV2 Denmark. So for those of you who don't know what T2 is, it's a uh, broadcasting company in Denmark and we're actually the biggest broadcasting company in Denmark. So um, started in the 80s, we started out with doing linear broadcasting, Flow TV, and for the last years we've been doing a lot of digital products. So we have our streaming service play, uh, we have our TV2 DK website and a bunch of free apps for new sports, entertainment of all kinds and uh, yeah, so for reference, Denmark is like, what, like uh, a little under 6 million people. Yep. So we're not a lot of people. And TV2 has a pretty big reach. Um, about 85% of the Danes actually engage with TV2 on the daily. So that's a lot. And, and in general, they watch an hour and 10 minutes of our programming every day. So. Um, we're state owned by the way, but commercially funded. So we're doing public service as well. And when you have that kind of outreach as a company, it's pretty um, huge responsibility. So uh, um, when I started at TV2, we were like a hundred in tech and now we're around 450 in our new tech organization. So we're growing and scaling and um, yeah. It's amazing. I would um, imagine that organizations such as Leap2 Media, having worked with the linear way of, of using or uh, delivering content and now going to do the digital transformation that has changed not only the way things are produced and delivered, but also the way that you transfer digitally. Oh, for sure. Like, uh, for instance, we've always been called a media company. And now we're saying we're a media tech company. And that's because like Flow TV is slowly dying out. Um, uh, it's mostly the older generation that are uh, watching Flow TV. And so it's a whole different strategy to make the business work and, and pivot the business to ensure it stays relevant, right? In, in 2024, as opposed to 88 when we, when we started out. Yeah. yeah, so not only competing against competitors, but also competing against the whole big like transformation in how things are delivered, produced overall. Yeah, for sure. And and for instance, like one of our biggest competitors is obviously Netflix, you might have heard of them. Um, so we're trying to do something else. We're trying to do more uh, Danish programming, right? They still and, and public service stuff. And I think that's uh, what the Danes enjoy. It's a, it's a pretty big brand, right? And it's something that's familiar to them. And, and we keep doing that in, in the sense of the digital strategy, so. Today we've already heard uh, two presentations um, on Matthews, especially on team topologies, DevOps topologies. And today what, what I would like to talk to you about is developer experience, which is built on top of, which is clearly one of the biggest themes on the developer world today. How would you describe the developer experience? Yeah, for me, uh, very holistically, right? It's it's about how developers feel about their work. It's about how productive they feel when they're working. Um, I think from DevOps, we've learned about like speed and quality, feedback loops, right? But DevX takes it kind of to a whole new level. It, it, it kind of adds on um, other stuff like flow state. That means how, uh, how much uh, are the developers able to keep a state of flow in their work? And then also what's really important, cognitive load, like how, how much cognitive load do they have um, when they're working, right? So I think, uh, what we used to do with TV2 is that uh, when I was in a DevOps team that's uh, now not there anymore, um, we used to just make some tools, give them to some SREs and be like, hey, here you go, 
that now you have those, uh, do whatever you want with yeah. them. And it kind of brought on a lot of cognitive loads. So we're trying to do something a little bit different these days. And, and I think with DevEx, uh, especially, it's important to think of the abstractions, like trying to take something that's really complex, like tooling, and, and then uh, wrap it up in something nice, something that'll uh, give them uh, think about that user experience, right? And yeah. treat them as your users. Exactly. I mean, team topologies, there are similar themes as, as, for example, in cognitive load, you try to extract the cognitive load in such a way that you have the streamlined teams and platform teams. And then the interactions you try to build, you said higher abstractions for nerds might be easier to think about, think about APIs just to make like yeah. the independence between. Yeah, or as in my case, a CLI. Um, people are also doing internal developer platforms. So um, those kind of things are all abstractions you can build on top of capabilities, right? Yeah. yeah. You said that you don't have a DevOps team anymore. Could you walk us through the kind of how did you mm -hmm. start and where you're currently on, on the developer experience and on the journey to the platform engineering? Yeah. So I started out actually doing some coordination work for an SRE guild at TV2. So probably uh, of people that at that point I did not understand anything that they were saying to me. Um, then I uh, then I kind of moved into product for ownership, and in in that DevOps team, I was the product owner and and was responsible for the tooling. But the thing was that. I think this might be something that's recognizable for a lot of people. We were just that overburdened DevOps team that had too many tools, too many services, legacy environments, um, and and just, well, we had the, the big cognitive blow, right? And so at some point they all quit and the team was just dissolved. And, and then the business had to say, okay, what are we gonna do about all these things? And, and they kind of spread them out and, and uh, made it work in, in that way. So uh, I think at TB2, uh, one of the engineers also stayed and then we transitioned into a DevX team, uh, focusing more on these abstractions and doing things differently than what we had been doing before. So. Interesting. And you, for those of us who are technological or technical or nerds, uh, can you, like, what kind of technologies do you have currently in place in the organization just to kind of set the scene on, on platform engineering and, and what kind of tooling would you use there? Yes. So obviously, we have a lot of Kubernetes. Uh, we uh, use Jenkins CI, but we also, the thing is about TV2 is that because we had that SRE model and we have that overburden DevOps team, um, we just have a, a vast landscape. It's not really good from a business standpoint. And that's what we're trying to clean up now is trying to say, okay, maybe we don't need seven different pipelines across uh, the product teams, right? Maybe we don't uh, need to all have Kubernetes clusters that we're doing internally in a product team. Maybe we can do something that's, uh, uh, well, from the platform engineer one, something that's standardized, but with a nice abstraction on top so the developers will actually want to use what we're, what we're building for them. Um, so that's what we're doing now. And uh, we have a CLI that we did as an abstraction. Uh, I think the platform team, the developer cloud platform team, they, they made a generic service chart is what they call it. So an API, right? Uh, to make it really nice and easy to uh, use some products. Interesting. Um, today, when talking about developer experience, we often connect measuring, measurement into it. And I've I read your blog post. I already know that maybe not always all, all the ways of measuring success in developer experience are necessarily the best. So how did you start measuring the developer experience and why? Yeah, I think we started uh, with door metrics like a lot of other companies. And I think what happened was uh, we did like a lot of other companies did and kind of uh, implemented them top down. And uh, can show an example. You can show an example. It's it's an old dashboard. We there's not data flowing into this anymore. It's it's already gone again, right? We had it for about one and a half years in TB2, and uh, and then we stopped uh, using it basically because the teams felt like they were being measured, right? 
what happened was that, um, and, and this is typical, right? Some executive will read the accelerate and maybe not all of it, and maybe not understand it fully, or at least understand if I'm implementing these metrics, what am I gonna do with them? Like, why am I measuring? And, and what am I gonna use the data for? Um, and so uh, I was actually in charge of the data aggregation. Now I mentioned the best landscape of tooling, right? So it's really hard making that data aggregation for, for my team because they had to collect data from all kinds of sources to make it work. So it was hard to maintain as well for, for my team. Um, but yeah, the thing is, we quickly learned that engineers are super smart. And so they gained these metrics hard. And suddenly a lot of teams were elitist teams but we knew in reality they weren't right so i think that's that's what typically happens yeah to give some context your developers and the organizations still does do the continuous delivery as i've understood you you do yeah. it continuously on a daily basis yeah for sure like developers can still uh release on a daily basis or whenever they want hey um so so that's not we're not that far behind in terms of, of a DevOps transformation. Yeah. Um, they can put things into production at any time, um, as long as they <laughs> make sure to observe it, that it's uh, running and, and they're not uh, releasing and then going home and, and <laughs> them, right? Uh, so yeah, they, they definitely can. Yeah, the door metrics in short, essentially they measure how fast you deliver, so it's a lead time. How often do you do it? And then also the quality, which is essentially how often do you fail in production? How long does it actually take you to recover from that? And those are good metrics for organizations sure. that look at it from an umbrella point of view. But then when you start attaching essentially the team's performance into those metrics, it might not be the best way to go. So, how did you then? What was the alternative way of doing it? Well, so I'm trying to do something that's a little bit different. Like, first of all, right now we're working on trying to implement some DevX metrics, which also captures stuff like flow state and, and, and cognitive load, right? But it's, it's really hard because, again, the business needs to be really careful about measuring because they need to, again, know why they're doing it and what are they going to use the data for. So it's more of a, a, a cultural implement, uh, implementation that's really hard about that, I think. Um, but one of the things you could do is take a more uh, low effort approach, which is, which is what we're doing in my team. And, and I think uh, surveys are one of them, right? Um, and, and survey design, to be honest, is really, really, really hard. Uh, that's why there's often UXers and people that are really skilled at it that uh, that take a lot of time researching how to make good surveys. Uh, but I think doing something is better than doing nothing, right? And actually asking your developers about their experience of things. So I think we have an example, right, of a, of a survey. Yeah, so th for us, this is just a received experience. This is a, a, like a, a snippet of, of a survey we did asking the developers about their perceived experience of our uh, common CI pipeline. So it's, as you can see, it's really, it's really simple, right? And we're also asking, uh, because we have a vast technolo technological landscape, we're also asking them what, what pipeline technology they're using. Yeah. Because when we're trying to standardize some sort of tooling, maybe we don't need to, uh, like, like uh, maybe we, we can use some of the learnings that they have. Maybe we can use some of the things they're happy about. And we figured out actually that uh, people love GitHub Actions. Like we, are, we have a common Jenkins pipeline that's really old and we should fix that. But people love GitHub Actions. And so um, why are we thinking about doing something else if they already love that, the developers who are actually uh, using that? So. Yeah, this is just an easy, low effort way, I think, to measure something and measure uh, the experience of the developers. And you said earlier that you, when you started with the journey, you just created the tools and hoped that the developers would start using them. Has this changed the way how you approached or how your developers has approached it? 
For sure, for sure. I think, uh, first of all, like talk to your developers and get to know them because they will tell you everything they hate and everything they love. They're, they'll be happy to do that. And I think we, we had that uh, build it and they will come approach, uh, which just doesn't work because you need to treat developers as users, right? I, I, I kind of sometimes provocatively say I, UX and DevX is kind of the same thing. Uh, <laughs> I wrote that in my article as well, right? Um, and, and some people were a little mad about that, but... No, but on the other hand, if we, like those who listen to Matthew just before us, uh, developer experience and user experience are the same, it's just essentially different kind of team topologies that serve different customer segments. So, for example, the platform teams would be serving the value stream teams and, and kind of the the way how you approach everything is looking at it from the user experience point of view. It's just extension of that essentially, right? Yeah, definitely. And they will tell you about what their problems are and, and you can go fix them, right? I, I also always say maybe the coffee machine or the water cooler is like your best source of uh, uh, developer gossip. They'll they'll tell you a lot of things that that doesn't work for them, whether that be tooling. And sometimes it's processes too. You can do DevX by like nifting something that's not necessarily tooling or platform related, I think. Yeah. I know you I've been talking to you and, and people TV to before. You've um, you've been looking at the Get DX or the company called DX. Uh, can you talk about that, please? Like, yeah. Or what are what's and the motivation behind there? What they are doing? What are the thoughts behind that? For sure, we're uh, we're really inspired by those because uh, if you don't know Get DX, read about them. They, they, it's a platform for measuring developer experience, essentially, right? So um, it, they are doing a lot of good stuff. They're also doing like templates for surveys, so you can go ahead and find those on their webpage. But it's a really cool platform. And the thing is that the people who have made them have are like researching these yeah. topics. Yeah. So it's very research backed and um, it's kind of becoming maybe like a if, if not an industry standard in terms of measuring developer experience, they're they're getting there yeah. and uh, why do you spread? And I see that as uh, what they're doing on the research side, especially is, is kind of continuation from kind of DevOps topologies, team topologies, the accelerating to the, the state of DevOps reports and similar, like looking at into how do we actually measure it? Just, so you've made surveys, you've asked your developers, how do you, like, what kind of measurements or objectives do you put in place the organization? instead of the door then like what have you started doing we're using okrs which is like a new framework for the product managers um uh, and and it's it's very interesting framework to kind of uh set a goal and then make some some key learnings that you could actually uh measure on right so for instance i one of our objectives right now is to standardize the ci pipeline across c2 so maybe one of the uh key results could be uh, getting three developers to use it and then uh, make sure that they're they're gonna talk about it out in the organization so do that champion building and stuff like that um, and and yeah essentially if you don't know what okrs it's like a framework from Google I think essentially um, but it's uh, but it's really good and, and it's a simple way of uh, ensuring that you are kind of going in the right direction, but you have to couple it, I think, with, with something like me like real measurements, like surveys and, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so too, looking at organizations trying to put this in place, you cannot just pick one, you cannot pick the Dora <laughs> metrics and go just, okay, we'll just look at this dashboard and decide where we're going. Also, it might be really hard to use the OKRs. I, I know for a fact that OKRs take a while to settle in the organization and understand how to actually put them in place and how to have the key results and, and then kind of the actions behind that in place in such a way that they're not, not like they don't get obsolete or misdirect you. But it's a combination of those two. It's also interesting that even in the developer experience side, you have been able to not just have the automation, but also put put something like uh, like more traditional events, say, place. 
Oh, for sure. And I think it's just for product managers out there, it's really a, a, a great tool for ensuring that your team is aligned and, and they know where they're going. But obviously you need some sort of measurement to figure out what, what are the right things for us to do. And I think, um, I think obviously the survey example is like a very subjective, perceived way of measuring. I think having something that's more objective, like system data, I always call it like say versus do data, right? Combining those will give you a, a way more strong data set to work with. So I think that's, uh, that's something to consider. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So now that you've been, you've started the movement, you know that how it's going in, in TV2, how would you, like, if you would give advice to the audience and the listeners, how would you start doing it yourself? So I think something I found that is really an interesting tool is uh, going out and researching your developers' journeys. Um, having some qualitative, uh, qualitative interviews with them, right? And figure out um, what is the journey that they're going on when they're going from idea to production. And I think we have an example of that too. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'll show an example. Yeah. So this is just a, a simple developer journey, um, and we do a lot of these. We we go and we sit, meet with the developers. We sit down. We uh, ask them to go through some steps that they're taking in their journey, and it could be like. Uh, from here, we have like from develop and integrate to feedback and optimize, but it could be even like a, a, a smaller uh, part of the journey. Whatever you're trying to figure out something, um, just take, like ask them the steps that they're doing, right? And then you also ask them, how are you feeling when you're doing these things? Like what are some pains and gains that uh, that happens here? And, and, and they'll tell you about frustrations or things that are really good. And so at some point you're gonna be able to visualize these curves, right? And, and then you have your as is journey and you can do a to be journey. You can figure out maybe, okay, maybe we're, I'm not sure we get the right observ observability signals here, right? That's a low part of the journey. Maybe we can raise that bar a little bit and do some small improvements to uh, make that journey better essentially. And then go back and ask them what, when you've made those improvements and they've tried it out, go up and ask them, hey, did that raise your journey? Like, did that actually improve things for you? And then, then again, you have a measurable way of actually improving the developer experience yep. and the developer journey. Something I've not also noticed with the developer journey is that you, you kind of have to build the value stream, understanding of the value stream in your organization. For many organizations that I work with, they don't have any idea of the value stream they are currently running on. We've created uh, already years ago this pipeline game, which can be opened in Google. It's easy to find, and you just have cards, so either online or physically, that should just pile up and see how the value stream forms. And then, for example, GitLab, who is here today as well, they have their own value stream mapping way of doing, and clearly you've been doing value stream mapping and TB2 as well. So would you say, like, is that where to also like something that you have to have in place to start developing the developer experience or do you just start with something and then adjust it as you go? I think for me, I, I like to just start with something and iterate on it. Yeah. And, and sometimes you'll have an idea and, and just try to do like a simple prototype or even like a, a prototype, something that's uh, like a mock-up, like a mechanical th or Turk or a, uh, something you're, you've been drawing and show them to a developer and be like, hey, could this be something, right? We did that with our CLI. Uh, uh, one of the developers made a, a GIF, right? Uh, which was just a very quick mock-up because I, they were trying to show me what their idea was. And I, I came in, I'm not technical, I don't write code. So I come into this uh, this room with three whiteboards. It's like a crazy energy in there, three engineers and they're like, look at this, this, this is great, right? I'm, uh, I don't know, like, I, I don't know what's on that whiteboard. I can't write that, I can't read that. Uh, and so they made a gift to kind of show me where they were going. And I'm like, okay, I see that maybe that's valuable. Let's show it to someone else. Let's show it to the developers. And, and pretty quickly we found out that they were saying, that would be really cool to have that. And so, okay, let's, let's try and, and build something here, right? 
So I think just try something out, validate. Don't spend too much time before you actually go and validate, but, but just try something, right? Yeah. Consider the developers as users. Yeah. Good. Before the questions, uh, a short wrap up maybe. So you started at Dev DevOps, uh, digital transformation forced by not only competition, but also the way the industry changes. Uh, you started creating uh, understanding on the developer experience and platform engineering. Mm -hmm. And the journey currently uh, included ditching the door metrics or having them in the background more uh, to, to build the developer experience. And having the service, listening to your developers, considering them as users of whatever you create, and then doing the developer journey. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for everybody listening.